Welcome back, everybody, to the Roads We've Traveled podcast. My name is AJ Peltier. Thank you again for tuning in, subscribing, all that great stuff. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, um, just, you know, hanging in there. It's been kind of a rough week. Uh, well, rough couple weeks, I should say. Um, my cat's been sick, trying to diagnose what's been going on. Uh, but she's hanging in there. She's actually walking around me somewhere right now. Yeah, she's sitting right next to me right now. She hasn't really left my side. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, trying to put some funds together because she's been in the vet like three times already and, uh, she's got to go for an ultrasound soon. So, uh, hopefully it's nothing too major, but you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. So, but if anybody wants to donate, um, there is a GoFundMe page on the roads we've traveled podcast, uh, Facebook page, uh, anything you want to donate, I'd, I'd appreciate it. It's just money's really tight with me right now with my own medical bills and everything. And now on top of hers. It's just been very stressful. So if not, it's okay. I appreciate it anyway. So uh, maybe just share it with your friends or something. So, but anyway, let's get into today's guest. Today is my new friend, Mr. Scotty Aaron. Uh, Scotty is a, uh, he works in, he's actually uh, uh, works in a vet's office. Uh, he's an animal lover. Uh, we met through mutual friends from my friends over at Nightcap uh, True Crime Podcast. Um, he lives with uh, Gavin and a few others. Uh, he, you know, he lives with his boyfriend and uh, Gavin and Gavin's boyfriend. Uh, you know, which you'll hear about in today's episode. Um, so basically, Scotty just talks about, uh, you know, what it was like growing up dealing with uh, depression and anger, uh, and then getting married, having kids, and then uh, realizing that a lot of his anger coming out and stuff like that was uh, dealing with the fact that he was actually gay. Um, so, and how it just kind of like, you know, how he came out, um, you know, he, uh, separated from his wife and everything came out and everything. And, you know, how he had to deal with all, all that turmoil and everything, you know, with transitioning and everything and just being happier with himself, making sure that he's there for his kids and his family and stuff like that on top of accepting himself, um, you know, with everything so it, it was a really great uh story and it was very powerful and moving and um i enjoyed talking to scotty a lot i'd love to have him come back on the show uh but anyway let's get right into it here is episode 40 of the roads we've traveled podcast with mr scotty aaron check it out to the Rose We've Traveled podcast, episode 40. My name is AJ Peltier. Thank you again for tuning in, subscribing, and all that great stuff. I appreciate it. Um, I got a new guest, a new friend today, all the way from the West Coast, Mr. Scotty Aaron. Scotty, how are you, my friend? I'm good. How are you, man? Ah, hanging in there, you know, as best as we yeah. all can during this crazy, crazy time we're all living through right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> How's, uh, how's life been uh, during uh, COVID for you on the West Coast? It actually hasn't changed too much. Like we, um, and my job is, uh, I work at an emergency vet clinic. Um, we're open 24-7, 365. And I mean, we kept that during COVID. We were deemed essential. So we, it hasn't changed too much. Like, I mean, a lot of my friends and stuff were down and out for a long time and Meanwhile, I just kept going to work, which I would have liked to have a year off, but, <laughs> but yeah, no, I hear you. It was, it was the same. For me. Yeah. Same for me. I'm also essential too. I work in manufacturing full time. So I, you know, got the stimulus checks and stuff like that, which helped a little bit, but, uh, other than right. that, I, you know, had to <laughs> stay safe and stay away from people, you know, so but it is what for it sure. is. But uh, no, you work in a. Uh, that's got to be very rewarding, though, working in a, uh, you know, emergency vet uh, clinic and stuff like that too. I love animals, so um, I've it, had animals my whole life. How did you get uh, started with that? Um, so kind of my whole life, I kind of always wanted to do something in the veterinary field. I've always been like a super big animal lover, but like growing up, I was kind of the one thing that was holding me back was like the euthanasia, the euthanizing part, like. I was kind of just like, I don't know if I could 
kill a dog or a cat. Like, I don't know if I could do that. But um, once I kind of got over that fear and past that fear and kind of looked at it as more of, you know, you're not necessarily killing them. You're kind of ending, you know, their suffering and they don't really have a good quality of life. And so once I got over that, um, I went to Carrington College and joined their veterinary assisting program. Um, and then I worked at a general practice clinic for about a year. And that was not for me because all you do there is just like dentals, vaccines and ear infections. And I was like, this is not exciting. And so once I got the job offer to go to an emergency vet where we actually see like hit by cars and full on seizures and gunshot wounds. And I was like, okay, this, this is more adrenaline pumping. This is more, this is more my speed. Yeah, 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 yeah. So do you work like crazy hours or do you have like a set schedule? Uh, I have a set schedule. I work Monday through Thursday from 3 o'clock to 1 a.m. So, I mean, it's not like super crazy, but like it gives me my Friday, Saturday, Sundays off with my kids. So there you go. Yeah, those are actually my hours <laughs> for my main oh, job yeah? as a manufacturer. <laughs> yeah, I do have a part time job, though, but I'm not much of a night person, but I've been doing it for three years now. Um, I wish I could be on days to have somewhat of a life, but you know, it is what it is. I'll take what yeah. I can get, pay my bills, but, um, uh, yeah, but no, that's, that's very cool, man. Like, you know, I, I, I've had plenty, plenty of animals my whole life. I think at one point at my mother's house growing up, it was like a real Noah's Ark at one point because we had, uh, two dogs, two rabbits, parakeets, uh, my cat, you know, that I had for like 22 years that passed away a few years ago. Um, so yeah, no, I, I love animals. <laughs> we, we got you beat. We have, uh, nine dogs. Uh, wow. So. wow. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Are they all like, uh, I'm assuming like different ages and stuff like that too. Different oh yeah. They're, the, like, we got three, three German shepherds, a border collie, a Rhodesian, a little miniature dachshund, a little chihuahua. Like, yeah got all sorts of them in there <laughs> did you, so did i you apologize in advance if you hear me. um well no i only rescued three of them the rest were so only about oh my god sorry i'm outside and like there's like flies like hounding my face so um <laughs> um okay. so only four of them are mine three of them are gavin's my roommate and then two of them are Mike's, our other roommate, but I, they're all in the house together and they all get along together. And so very cool. Very cool. So let's get to know you a little bit more, you know, besides your uh, work and everything like that. Uh, where did you grow up? I grew up in Spokane. I came here when I was five years old. Um, I was born in kind of near like the Bay Area of California. It's a little town called Atwater. Um, and my dad was in the Air Force, and they were actually closing that Air Force base. Um, and so when I was five, we came to Fairchild Air Force Base. And so I've lived, I was one of the lucky ones that never got to move every year or two. And I've lived here ever since. And there was a brief stint where when I was about 20 to 22, I went back down to California to kind of like live with my mom and like live with my grandma and like kind of help them out and stuff. But just the area they were in, it wasn't the greatest area of California. So I was like, all right, I'll go back to Spokane. So gotcha. Gotcha. Was, was there any like, uh, troubles growing up or anything like stuff going on at home? Or like, um, uh, well, rough childhood or anything. <laughs> I mean, not like really like tough, or kind of tough, not really tough childhood. Um, I mean, I struggled with like my identity issues, like my whole entire life. Um, and so like, I had a lot of like behavioral issues and like nobody could really identify where they were coming from. Um, the only thing they could really kind of like chalk up was ADHD. So like I was on Adderall from the time I was like eight years old to like 16. Um, but like, that wasn't like the primary issue. I mean, the primary issue was that I was gay and <laughs> nobody, and I didn't know how to deal with it. And nobody knew how to help me deal with it because I 
wasn't expressing it. And so right. I just kind of hit it and faked it. And yeah, that must have caused like a lot of depression, anxiety and stuff like that. Oh. too. For... Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely have committed quite a few suicide attempts in my life. Um, my most recent one was actually just like three or four years ago that um, Gavin, my roommate, actually saved me from. So, um, yeah, I, I've definitely struggled with it for a long time. And I actually like have just recently, like probably within the last two to three years, I've actually been able to kind of like be okay with like who I am and like not worry about anybody else's bullshit. So, right. When did, when did you finally, um, come out and, um, did it help with the identity crisis too? Like, and like being more happy with yourself? So I actually came out, um, several times, um, and then quickly reverted back in, um, because I was just like, I was just so scared. Like, I mean, I had a military dad. Um, I didn't really know, like we grew up in a pretty like open like household like we you know my parents would let us watch you know PG-13 movies and like R-rated movies when we were like 14 15 like you know so like we we weren't so much of like a super strict household but it was still the fact of just being in a military household and like being with my dad i think the number one contributing factor is when i was 14 um, we had like a office and like a family computer and I didn't know this because I was 14 and naive, but I never knew internet history was a thing. <laughs> I did not know that you could open up internet and go back through history. So me being a horny 14 year old, I decided to look up some stuff. And then the next day my dad called me into the, uh, office and playing behind him was the gay porn that I had watched the night before. Like he had it up and playing and I was like, oh my God. And he had pointed to it and he had told me, you know, how disgusting it was and how wrong it was and that this stuff is not allowed. Like this is, you know, very shameful stuff. Like I'm very disappointed in you. Like, you know, all the classic verbiage that you get and so me being me i was just kind of like oh i i didn't know that was bad like i i i mean i found it enjoyable <laughs> at the time but like i didn't know it was i didn't know it was bad so i kind of like remained my life like growing up from the time i was 14 of thinking like okay so this is bad like these things that i'm feeling are bad these things are wrong I don't need to be feeling this way. So I kind of just hit it as best as I could. Um, and then on my 16th birthday, I had two friends spend the night. And when I guess I could say at some point during the night they had, cause my whole life I've always been heard like, we know you're gay. It's okay. If you're gay, like just tell us you're gay. And like, and so I've heard that my entire life and my friends were kind of like doing that to me and they were like, you know, we're still going to be your friends. Like, we're still going to love you. Like you can just tell us. And so I believed them. And so I kind of told them, I was like, okay, maybe I can just, maybe I can just tell them I like both. And like, that will kind of release some of this burden. And so I just told them I was bi and they were fine with it. The rest of the night continued, like, we were still having a good time, like nothing was wrong with it. And then the next day I kind of woke up and I was like, oh my God, what did I just do? Like, they're going to tell everyone like my whole life is over. And hey, no barking. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, <laughs> so I kind of quickly like told them like, Hey, I was just kidding. Like, I'm not really bi. I was just fucking with you guys. Like, you know, you guys were just trying to like pry stuff out of me. And like, of course they didn't believe me. And they were like, are you afraid we're going to tell people? And I was like, well, no, I just, you know, I, I just feel bad for lying to you guys. And, you know, I'm not really bi. And, you know, just kind of left it at that. And then I went on and I had a couple of girlfriends and 
one girlfriend turned into a wife of 10 years <laughs> and yeah <laughs> um that's that, that was kind of at least the first time i came out um and then i just assumed once i got married like i was like okay it's it's gone now like i'm married now i have a wife i do love her like i legitimately did fall in love with her and that was the that was the thing that was weird for me is because i was i was kind of like maybe i am bi because i legitimately do love this woman so like maybe maybe i am like you know but now that i'm with her like i'm also a faithful person so like nothing ever is going to come of it i'm married now so we'll just leave it at that and that's not the way the plan went <laughs> yeah we were talking for for listeners we were talking off air a little bit uh through messenger and stuff like that and he was telling me a story and i was just like oh my god you know like yeah i mean like that that, that must have been really rough man like um you know, feeling, I guess, insecure, you know, and scared. Like I've, yeah. I've, I've been there myself. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a heterosexual man myself. Um, you know, I've, you know, I've, I've, you know, at, at a young age too, you know what I mean? Like you do get, uh, I guess, uh, thoughts sometimes, you know, with identifying who you are as a person too, you know, I've had those thoughts too. Um, I'm perfectly comfortable with my sexuality and stuff like that too. Um, you know, I've, I, we've had you know some of my close friends will joke around and stuff like that too and um whatever but like um i i've, I've joked around too about like um uh like i like I'm, I'm not gonna lie like you know like there are times where like you know you'll you'll notice like uh you know like ryan reynolds for instance like everyone was like oh if, if you were if you were gay like who who would you pine for or whatever i'm like oh definitely ryan reynolds like hey you know <laughs> <laughs> he's got washboard abs and a pretty face and you know this that, and the other but I, yeah i'd never go for it though you know what i mean but like i was you know whatever but like and then uh some of my friends get a little weirded out when i say that i'm like what like <laughs> i'm perfect like i said i'm perfectly comfortable with my sexuality it's like i'd never go all the way but you know it's like yeah whatever he's a beautiful man who cares you know yeah. <laughs> i wish i could look that beautiful you know right so, absolutely i don't know where i was going with this but you know just you know being <laughs> goofy about it and stuff but um but I'm, I'm not scared to say stuff like that too you know what i mean but yeah. i get where you're coming from too like at, at a young age and then being being rejected too it was it was kind of like uh like not with like my sexuality or anything like that, but at a young age, I was, I was bullied a lot. I was picked on a lot and, um, I couldn't be myself because, you know, I grew up, um, you know, like my, my family was, uh, you know, working a lot and stuff. We had, you know, some things happen in our family, this, that, and the other, my parents got divorced when I was a sophomore in high school. So it was very hard to be myself around other people when I'm constantly getting picked on at school you know, uh, for being, I guess, like a nerd or a geek or whatever, uh, having a very small circle of friends and stuff. So it took me a very long time to be able to be myself. And as, as yeah. soon as I got out of school, like I was just like, Oh, thank God. You know what I mean? Like I could finally just focus on me and it definitely took a long time. Even I'm still trying to be okay with myself to this day. Like I'm back in therapy again. I'm, I'm on antidepressants mm -hmm. for the first time in my life. Cause I was getting like panic attacks this year which was new for me and uh you know but i'm finally at a level now where i'm okay with myself i'm you know i'm still single you know which you know it's it is what it is but you know i'm i'm able to focus more on me and take care of me and be okay with me and look at myself in the mirror and nice. say all right you're you're doing good you're you're doing good yeah. you know like noticed i've lost like five pounds already i'm like yeah give myself a little pat on the back like i've been working out hard for a month i deserve it you know what i mean like so stuff like that you know we all we all go through that kind of stuff where it's hard to be okay sometimes yeah. it's, and it's okay to not be okay um but it's also important to surround yourself with people who do care about you and are there for you at the end of the day and like you were saying with your friends like you know that I can't imagine how difficult that was for you, you know, at that, at that young age and stuff like that too. But like, uh, but then eventually coming out down the road, I'm, I'm sorry that it happened after you, you said you were married. Um, that must've been really difficult, you know, everything that happened. Um, 
Are you guys still like civil and stuff to this day or now we are. So we, so we had, we had been together for five years and then at the five year mark, we got married. Um, and then, you know, we, we had our son while we were together for that five years. Um, and then after we had got married, we, we had our daughter. Um, and about, I'd say somewhere around the seven, seven year mark, seven or eight year mark, somewhere around then, um, was when I just started getting really angry. Like I was just, I was flying off the handle about nothing. Um, I mean, I was, I, I was never like, you know, like physical, physically angry, but I would just start like screaming over just like the littlest shit. I would just start picking fights with my wife and I couldn't figure out why. And like, yeah, I mean, she was even asking me, like, she was like, you know, where, where is all this coming from? Like, what are you so pissed off about? And at the time I had no idea. Like at the time I was like, I don't fucking know. Um, and it wasn't until later, actually like three years ago later, when I had went to a counselor for the first time in my adult life, um, that we had discovered that around this time that around this time that I was getting so angry was around the same time. And I know everyone in the world hates her now because she's an idiot, but <laughs> was around the same time that Caitlyn Jenner was coming out. Mm. And so that was such a big publicized interviews with Diane Sawyer and Barbara Walters. And I mean, like she was fucking everywhere that I was subconsciously looking at all of that shit saying, that's going to be you coming out at fucking 70 years old, you know, wasting your entire fucking life. Like, and I had, I would have never known that if I didn't go see a counselor, like we were kind of like doing the, like it was, she, he was actually a really great counselor and we were doing just kind of like the investigative work of like what was going on. Right. And I don't remember really how we came up with it, but I was very, at the time I was, I, I hate to admit it now, but at the time I was a very big reality show Kardashians, Real Housewives, Jersey Shore. <laughs> hey, this is not wrong. So, it's, not, it's not my cup of tea, but you know, like it, you know, people like it. It's all right. You know, it's okay yeah. every once in a while to, I, I've heard like it's okay for like some people that want to escape reality love watching trashy reality shows just you know, <laughs> unplug from yeah I, I don't understand it but you know whatever it helps you out cool you know what I mean <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah and so like I mean of course at the time like I mean I was watching every season and every episode of Kardashian so like of course when Caitlyn Jenner was out I was watching all of her interviews and reading all the magazine interviews and everything and i was subconsciously internalizing it as that's you like that's what you're gonna do when you're 70 years old you're gonna miss out on your entire fucking life and that's going to be you so back to kind of like getting angry and stuff i had eventually like came to the terms with the fact of i need to come out and i was like but i don't know how to come out to my wife <laughs> like like that's <laughs> that's not someone you're like supposed to come out to so um finally after like one really big like heated argument i had kind of just like sat her down and i was like okay well maybe i can do what i've done before and i can just halfway come out because i do love her so maybe i can just tell her i'm bi because at this point i don't even know like maybe i am because I do still love her and I do still love our family and I do still want to be with her. I just want to be able to watch magic Mike and enjoy it together. Like, <laughs> like, so I had sat her down and I had told her, I was like, I think I know the reason why I've been so angry. And she was like, why? And I was like, I'm, I think I'm bisexual. And she had bawled her eyes out because she didn't know what I was necessarily asking for she thought i was going to ask if i could like get a side boyfriend and like do all these side right. things and i was like and i was like no 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 i don't i don't want any of that i just want you to know who i am like i just i want you to know that there's this part of me like i don't i don't want to go 
fool around with a million different people. Like, you know, we took wedding vows. I'm serious to that. Like, so I just want you to know. And so then she kind of calmed down a little bit, but ever since then, our marriage was just on a downhill track. Um, once that came out, it was just, I mean, we were having two to five hour long fights, four to seven nights a week. Like we were just oil and water ever since then. Um, and so finally it came to a head and we both just realized, like, I think, I think I looked at her and said, I want a divorce during one of the arguments. And she said, me too. And I was like, okay, cool. And I had left the house that night. I didn't really have anywhere to go because my closest friend at the time was like stuck at work till like 4 a.m. Um, and so I slept in my car that night in my work's parking lot. And at the time I was at the general practice clinic and they had told me when they showed up, they were like, you usually get here like right on time. I'm usually the one that shows up like an hour early why were you here when I got here? And I was like, Oh, I've been here since 3am. And they're like, what the fuck? Why? And, you know, so I had slept in my car. And then that night, I actually went home with that same coworker and crashed on her couch. And I didn't really have really anywhere to go. Um, I was staying with my best friend at the time. And then once I realized, like, this is it, like, our marriage is over. Like there's, there's nothing to go back to. There is no fixing it. Like we're, we're done. I had started self-identifying essentially. Like I had started wondering like, okay, am I really bisexual? Am I really gay? Like what, what's going on here? Um, mm. and so I had, I did my whole phase and <laughs> I had hooked up and, you know, after, after hooking up, I was like, okay, I think I'm gay. <laughs> I was like, I think I've, <laughs> I was like, I think I've found my, my, my identity. And I think this is who I am. And this is what I like. And this is what I love. And so I, I, I think this is what's going to happen. And once that came out, a lot of people um, abandoned me. Um, I was living with my best friend. We were best friends from seventh grade until my marriage. Like we had been best friends for like 16, 17 years. And I was living with her and her husband. And out of nowhere, she sent me a message one day while I was at work. And she was like, you need to leave. You need to find somewhere to go. Um, you have to be out by the end of the month. And I was like, I don't have anywhere to go like I like my general practice clinic didn't pay the greatest and I was like I can't afford rent on my own I don't have anywhere to go and she was like well you need to figure it out she was like we don't want you here anymore and I was just like wow I was like okay I was like in our like 16 17 year friendship we've only had like one fucking argument and now you're just done and that was the last time I've ever heard from her. I still have not heard from her to this day. And I was like, oh, all right. And so shortly during that period is when I actually met Gavin, my roommate. And, um, or well, I had known of Gavin for a while. Like we had been introduced back when I was married through some like mutual friends of ours and stuff. And mm. so I had, I had known of him for a little bit and like we had been Facebook friends and friends for a while and stuff, but we had decided to start a relationship between the two of us. And it was great for the first like two to three months. And then I needed a place to live. <laughs> and he, I had kind of told him, I was like, look, I got nowhere to go. I know this is really early on in the relationship, but would it be okay if I moved in? And I mean, Gavin being as caring and helpful as he is, you know, he said, of course. And unfortunately, I think that was the ultimate demise of our relationship because we ever since then, we were just oil and water. <laughs> we did not, we did not work out well together at all. Like we are not, 
we are very much so friendship compatible, but relationship compatible, we are not. <laughs> like we both have. At least you guys are still very, friends. You know what I mean? Like that, that, yeah, that's, yeah. And that's kind of what we had decided. Like we, like we both have very different love languages. We both have mm-hmm. very different expectations of how relationships should go. He's more of just like let the relationship kind of just be a free ride take it as it comes whereas i'm more of like the no we're supposed to be in love and it's supposed to be a fairy tale and there's supposed to be sparkles and like <laughs> so yeah i got it i got it yeah. so during all of this i mean me and him were fighting just as much as me and my ex-wife now and so i was just kind of like is this is this just my life like is this am i just going to just keep screaming at people four nights a week like this is this is what i have huh like cool and so i had went to the bathroom and uh gavin has a gavin has a shitload of like medical issues and he has for the past like four or five years and so he has almost every he has his own little miniature pharmacy in his bathroom of pills that have worked out for him and haven't worked out for him but he's just kind of like hung on to and i knew that and so i had went into his bathroom and i started rifling through all of his pills and i didn't know what they were but i was going to just take every single bottle all the quantities and every single bottle and i was just going to be like hey i'm not just going to keep being burdens on people's lives um and so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna kill myself like i'm 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 pretty set in stone and like you know gavin was even trying to tell me you know like you have kids and i was like it's fine i was like it will be so much better off without having a gay dad and you know look at all the shit i've endured (laughs) before even like officially coming out um and around the same time I guess I should have mentioned this too, because it wasn't just like Gavin and stuff. It was also family stuff. My, my mom was, my mom has always been extremely supportive. My mom's like my best friend. I could call my mom and ask her for advice on my sex life. And she would give it to me. Like I could talk to my mom about anything in the world. Um, when I had finally decided like, okay, I'm going to come out um my dad and my brother were the ones that i was most not scared to tell but nervous to tell and so i had told my brother um just over facebook messenger because he lives down in florida um and i had messaged him and told him and he had replied back and said i want you to be happy but this is going to take some getting used to but I'm happy for you and I want you to be happy. So I was kind of like, okay, that's a fair answer. I mean, you know, sure. I'm, I'm 27 years old. Like you've only ever known me with Brittany and girls. So that's fair. Like I can, I can respect that answer. And then like three weeks later, he deleted me off Facebook and has not spoke to me since. And I was like, okay. (laughs) I was like, well, that's the exact opposite of what you said. So we haven't spoken four years and I'm like, all right cool um i had told my dad and my dad essentially said the same thing like you know i'm happy you're happy Uh, you know i've kind of always had the suspicion of course um and i want you to be happy and so i was kind of surprised and taken aback by his answer but i was very happy with it um and then six months later i went to the spokane pride parade and i took my kids with me because my kids they love the pride parade they always call it the rainbow parade they always have a great time like they love it it's nothing like the san francisco (laughs) parades where there's just like naked men on floats like shaking their dicks at the audience like it's nothing like that the most spokane does is like you might see a guy in like boxer briefs and i'm like whatever occasionally my kids see me in boxer briefs so it's not the end of the world um well, the next day they had a great time. We all had a great time. And then the next day I woke up with the longest Facebook message ever from my dad telling me how inappropriate it was that I took my kids to a disgusting event like that and how 
wrong it is that his grandkids are being subjected to shit like that. And I was like, wow. I was like, so you're not as okay with my lifestyle as you initially had claimed. So I was dealing with, you know, no longer having a relationship with my brother, no longer having a relationship with my dad, fighting with Gavin four to seven days a week. And so I was like, I'm just going to take all these pills and I'm going to die. And that's fine. And Gavin had to like physically stop me. He had to like physically remove me from the bathroom, physically haul me out to his car. He took me to the hospital, you know, the whole shebang. I was on suicide watch. You know, I had an appointment with a social worker, like all the, all the usual shit. Hey, stop it. Um, and, uh, so once I had started talking to a counselor and got on my antidepressants, um, I actually did start to feel kind of better. Um, I'm doing okay ish. Um, like I'm taking fluoxetine. I'm going to a counselor about once a week, but Like, the thing that was still driving me nuts was, like, Gavin wasn't being the lovey-dovey Nicholas Sparks romance that I wanted him to be. (laughs) And and so I was like, okay, I I was like, I don't want to break up with you. Like, you've now saved me from multiple events. You've saved me from being homeless. You've saved me from killing myself. You've, You've literally been my knight in shining armor but why aren't you my knight in shining armor um and so finally we had gotten into a huge huge ordeal i had thought that i might have covid um i went and got tested and i was pissed off at the fact that he wasn't like sympathetic towards me and like hugging me and like kissing me (laughs) and he was like why am i gonna hug and kiss you when you have fucking covid get away from me and i was like you don't know i don't have covid but why aren't you being sympathetic of the fact that i may have covid and like we just ended up getting in this huge fucking ordeal um my test results ended up coming back negative we went camping that weekend and we were it was just me and him we were sitting around the fire and we started talking about our relationship and like he started telling me like, you know, I'm never going to give you what you want. Like you want a fairy tale Disney princess relationship. And I'm not the guy to give that to you. Like I'm a pretty independent guy. I don't really do all of that. Like there is someone out there who can love you the way you want, but that means we have to break up Scotty. And like, at first I was just like, no, 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 no. Like, you know, because he had, he had saved me. So I was like, why would I give up the guy that's saved me multiple fucking times? And so I had stopped for a minute. I took a humongous bong hit. (laughs) And then I just kind of looked up at the sky for probably 10 or 15 minutes. And then I looked at him and I was like, fuck you're right (laughs) and he was like i know i'm right and i was like but i still want to be friends with you and i know every relationship says that and like it never ends up working out like they always just say that and then they like you know they don't they don't still end up being friends like they they just don't and gavin was like that's fine like we can still be friends i have no problem being friends with you i have no problem with you still living with me you can take the back bedroom make it your own that's fine and i was like okay i was like well let's let's give this a shot and let's see how it goes and that was almost two years ago and i'm still living with them i think we've only had like two arguments maybe three like since and like they weren't even really like heated or anything like we've been just fine and i'm like it's weird that we can make a friendship work, but relationship, one of us was going to end up on forensic files. Like one of like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I applaud you for that, man. It, it is very hard to uh, 
be friends after a relationship. Um, you know, and I, and, you know, I know, I know Gavin too. Gavin uh, from Nightcap uh, invited me on his show a while back. Definitely check it out, uh, my listeners. If you That's right. You did the the phone call killer, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, the um, um, oh my god, it's like blowing my mind. I can't think of it right now. But yeah, I was on yeah. uh, one one episode of Nightcap. Definitely, check. I'll leave a link below for people to check it out. Um, and I do miss Nightcap. I haven't gotten any of my Nightcap le- lately. And, uh, you know, I know they've all been enjoying summer break and everything. I hope they yeah. come back soon. But um, I I've think been meaning to get Gavin on the show, too. In a, couple minutes, or in a couple of days. Okay, cool. Very cool. So yeah. uh, By the time this episode comes out, it'll, it'll, they'll probably already be chugging, chugging along on their new episodes. But anyway, um, yeah, no, I, I've always had issues as well with uh previous relationships i've like i've been cheated on i was engaged once and uh we had a house and everything and my my ex cheated on me while i was out working my ass off to pay the bills and uh so that didn't last and then uh i uh my last real relationship was a few years ago and um you know it's i don't want to name names or anything like that so i'm not going to but um you know it was good. It was good for a really long time. I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with this woman. And just like out of nowhere, she like her mom was going through a divorce and she was kind of questioning a lot of things in her life. And we, I was laid off at the time too. And we went on a trip to go see some of her family down South. And when we came back, she was just like, ah, this isn't, this isn't working for me anymore. It was like a complete like blind side to me. I was just like, what is going on? You know what I mean? So um, but it was for the best, you know, we're, we are two different people. Um, she, she has a lot of things that weren't really lining up with what I wanted to do with my life. And that's fine. Um, we did get back in touch about a year later. We started talking, hanging out again. We were trying to do the friends thing a little bit more at times too. Um, but I think she started catching feelings again and it scared her. So she ran away into the arms of someone else I was friends with. So, and they're together now. Yeah. So it was, it was kind of like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like I was, I, I was going through a lot at the time. I was, my depression was through the roof. Um, you know, I, m- one of my best friends committed suicide. Um, you know, uh, my cat, I had to put one of my cats down. Um, things with my family weren't good at all. Um, cause things were exploding inward within some some of my family stuff that i've said on the show previously my my relationship with my father was isn't that great either Uh, my siblings and i weren't great with each other at the time we are now uh but yeah it was just a whole bunch of stuff just piling on and piling on and then i find this out and i'm like and i find out from him my my buddy that she started dating and i was like i respect the fact that you told me i don't respect the fact that she couldn't tell me and we had all this history again. You know what I mean? So like it was just it was just like that. And we haven't we haven't talked in years uh since then. You know, I, I know she's doing well and she's happy, she's healthy, you know, I'm happy for her, but I mean, I don't know. I, I'd probably just walk the other way if I ever saw her. You know what I mean? Just it's not good for me to because I still care about her. I still think about her and it's stuff that's come up in therapy too. And it's like, if it was supposed to work, it would have worked, but it just, it just didn't. We're just two different people and I got to be okay with that. And you know, I've had to learn to be okay with that. So for sure. Yeah. But I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah. Dating in your thirties sucks. <laughs> it's so weird. Like, yeah. I, so now I'm actually with like, the greatest man in the world and we've been together for awesome. a year and um, his name is race and he actually lives here with me and gavin too and gavin's new boyfriend hardy also lives here and like yeah, i love hardy. like yeah and like now i love like i i the other day actually i was sitting on the back porch and i think it was the first time in my life i actually said it but i was sitting out here and i was just watching Gavin and watching Hardy and watching race and like just the four of us just like interacting and like the dogs were running around and like it was just a really great night and like I think it was the first time in my life that in my head I actually said holy shit I love my life like (laughs) like like I mean yes I'm I'm still taking my fluoxetine just just because I I feel like it has worked for me 
Like I, you know, I used to be really angry. I used to get really pissed off easily. And ever since I started taking that, I have wit on me on top of all the weed I smoke. I I just have like a much more like chill. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like I just have much more of like a chiller vibe and like Mm. nothing really gets to me. Like, I mean, I, with the exception of the other night, because my son was just being a complete asshole. (laughs) <laughs> which it's okay to call your kids assholes. <laughs> but with the exception of the other night, I have not like yelled or screamed or raised my voice in like over a year. Like it's, I mean, it's been, it's been great. And, you know, being around all these people, I realize now that like, you know, I haven't spoke to my dad since before the election. Um, right. He we used to talk all the time because he kept, telling me every single day that Donald Trump was going to win. And I was like, cool. Thanks, dad. Thanks for asking about my life. And <laughs> like, um, and so since then, like, you know, he didn't reach out to me on my birthday. He didn't reach out to my son on his birthday. He didn't reach out to me on father's day. And like before I would take all of those and like, I would just be extremely like depressed and upset about it. And like, now I'm just kind of like, you know, that's fine. If you want to, if you want that kind of life and you want that kind of relationship, that's on you, man. Like, I'm fine where I'm at. I have people around me who love me. Like, I have a boyfriend who loves me more than anything. Like, I'm okay where I'm at. Like, it's, it's, it's strange because I don't think I've ever been okay where I'm at. And like, now I am. Well, hey, I'm happy for you, man. It's kind of the same situation i'm in with my dad right now my dad's health isn't great and he grew up in uh, a very rough he had a very rough childhood so it was very hard for him to trust and open up and stuff like that um but uh, i'm not going to go too much into detail because i've talked about it a hundred times on the show already so but uh, yeah. our relationship now is more very strained we don't talk as much and the only time i really hear from him now is if he needs something off of amazon and i'm like yeah i i just, hi how are you you know what i mean like stuff like that it's just like okay yeah. like, enough's enough you know i just but... found out a couple weeks ago and that's only because so i'm still friends with him on facebook but i have unfollowed him because all he posts is like things about joe biden but it's like from website yeah. or, or from it's from like websites like daily info business dot org dot net and i'm like do you trust that like, do, you, like, do you trust that source like is that really your go-to so like i've unfollowed him but um every now and again like maybe once a month i'll like go to his profile just to see if he's maybe posted like an updated picture of himself or like something because he lives in mexico so like i also like i don't see him often or anything like that and so why is, he still, why, is he, why is he still following the U.S. Uh, American politics? American <laughs> politics when he's living in Mexico? I don't know. Okay. All right. <laughs> just, just a thought. And, I mean, you know, I wouldn't be worried yeah. about American politics if I was living in Europe. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I'd be like, oh, well, that sucks. <laughs> sucks to live there. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, right. So, um, but he finally did post a life update and it was that his new wife is six months pregnant and they're expecting twins and i'm like oh cool thanks for you know letting me know that (laughs) like so like he just doesn't let me know anything about his life and so i'm just like okay like if that's have fun with your new kids sorry i was the failure who didn't grow up watching football and being your macho military boy you wanted so yeah. like have fun with your new did. kids man yeah my dad got remarried a number of years ago and i found out by accident and i was told to keep it a secret from the rest of my family which was very rough for a long time and then yeah. when he had his heart attack uh we didn't know about it until like a week after he got home and uh that's when i told everybody i was like fuck this like i'm, yeah. I'm not i'm not gonna be you know, left holding the bag here when you're gone. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. not it's not fair to me. So and that's that's why our, our relationship hasn't really been the same since. So yeah, it's it, and it's kind of just like that. Like you know, my, my and that's kind of why I've dropped the name. So my last name's actually Morgan. Um, my middle name is Aaron. 
but I just kind of chose to drop that last name, like social media wise, and even just like even really introducing myself to people because I just, I don't really feel like a Morgan anymore. Like mm. nobody on the Morgan family reaches out to me. Nobody asks how I'm doing. Nobody asks how my kids are doing. Like I've actually thought about changing my name multiple times, but the only reason I won't is just because my kids' last names are Morgan. And so I'm like, well, you know, I don't want it to be all super confusing. Maybe if I marry this man that's sitting inside, I'll hyphenate my last name or something. But like... <laughs> well, there you go. Well, yeah. this is really great, man. Like getting to know you, getting to talk to you and stuff. Do you got, do you have anything like uh, any future plans like down the road and stuff? You know, once everything kind of like calms down a little bit with uh, COVID, hopefully. Eventually, I would love to be somewhere on the Oregon coast. Um, like I've done, I've done, hang on. Hey! <laughs> Stop it! Like I've done my Spokane time for like my whole entire life. And every single time I go to the ocean, I am... I'm just in tranquility. Like it's, it's my happy place. Mm. Um, it's, it's, I feel it's where I belong. Like if that makes sense, like. I, I totally, even, I totally understand, man. Like I would yeah. just real quick. I, um, I, I was in school for graphic design a couple of years back and then my school shut down without any notice to their students. So like they just, you know, they were trying to tell us to transfer this. And I was like three months away from graduating. And I was just like, what the fuck? So, like, everything at that time was starting to spiral downward. Like, that was the beginning of everything going on. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I took <laughs> took out some money from my savings account. I went up to the Cape Cod for, like, a long, long weekend. I just, uh, uh, you know, stopped at a dispensary on my way up there. Because at the time, Connecticut didn't legalize marijuana until this year, finally. Um, so I stopped at a dispensary, I got some edibles, I got a cart, stopped at a liquor store, got some alcohol, and I just sat on the beach, you know. Yeah. Like, and Cape Cod's water. beautiful. I haven't I haven't actually been to Cape Cod, but the new season of American Horror Story just premiered this last week and it mm. actually like takes place in Cape Cod. And so I'm like, Oh god, Cape, that place is beautiful. Cape Cod is nice, but you, you don't want to go from july through september because that's when it's absolutely fucking nuts up there it's just oh, full of sure. people like everything's just packed i went around may right before the season was about to start so like everybody was like all the local businesses that are seasonals just started opening up and getting ready for the season so it was really nice it was quiet um i just i went hiking um around some of the beach trails and stuff i just sat on the beach went to my hotel just like chilled I went to a couple of breweries and just, you know, with a friend of mine and we we're just, we had a good time. So it was awesome. So yeah, this last time I went to the ocean, I mean, like I was just like, like I'm, I will just keep like adventuring and adventuring and adventuring. And I was just like jumping from like ocean rock to ocean rock and like every ocean rock that I was on, like I just kept finding like a bundle of like 20 to 30 starfish, just like all like collected under the rocks. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so cool. <laughs> and so like, yeah, I just like even, so this past um, July, um, I had to put my dog down. He was oh, just not sorry. doing well and it's okay. And he was just such my little buddy. Like, I mean, whenever, like, he loved everybody. Like, he loved Gavin. He loved Hardy. He loved Race. But, like, whenever he saw me, like, I mean, you, his eyes just lit up. His tail went a million miles an hour. He followed me everywhere. And so it was really, really rough. I was in just such a not myself depressed state. And so I had said, I was like, I need to go to the ocean. I was like, I think this is the only way. I'm going to get out of this. Unfortunately, the nearest ocean is eight hours away. <laughs> and sure as shit, I went to the ocean on the way there. Uh, race was driving. I fell asleep in the back seat. And while I was asleep, I had a dream that he was a puppy again and that he was totally fine and that he was super happy. And then once I got to the ocean, like, my depression was like cured even coming back my like to the house where he like no longer was my depression was still cured like I was like okay ocean it is like I need to be somewhere 
where I can get to the ocean in two hours or less. Like I need, like that. That's so. That's my long term goal is, and that's actually Gavin's long term goal too, is to make it somewhere down in Oregon coast area. And if I can keep having my own little gay family that I've kind of like created and put together, like I mean, it's it just it's it's a be- it's beautiful like it really is like i mean everybody that comes into contact with the four of us like they're always just so like you guys are great like mm-hmm. everyone loves my boyfriend everyone loves me everyone loves gavin everyone loves mm-hmm. hardy it's just it's, that was so that, it's that just was, that was the impression i got when i first talked to gavin and hardy when i was on that episode and like we were talking like offline and stuff i'm like man gavin's so cool like we were yeah. like helping each other out like he was asking me for tips and stuff about how i do my show and this that and the other and i was asking him a few questions too so like you know i if i ever make it out on the west coast I, which i hope to someday I, like i told gavin i was like i'm coming to hang with you guys like you know because well, i sing too so and i know he does karaoke yeah. so i was like i'll come sing with you guys he was like hell yeah dude like let's let's do yeah. it so <laughs> yeah no it's just it's just and if there's one thing i've taken from gavin over all these years it's just the helpfulness that he carries so like high and mighty like he is always wondering and striving like how can i help people like and unfortunately that's a double-edged sword because sometimes he helps people more than he helps himself (laughs) but like but it's just such a it's just such a great trait that he has and something that i've like easily picked up on and you know i just invited my co-worker that if he ever needs a place to crash like he can come crash with us like you know because it's just that's just who we are like and that's just like what we do like and race race is the same way he's been three years sober from alcohol um this last august and so he he knows what it's like to have hardships and be abandoned by people and shit too and so he's very like you know how can we help you know what can Mm -hmm. we do like you know, and it's just, it's great. Well, that this was, this was great, Scott. Thank you so much um, for being so open. And, you know, this is such a very inspiring story too. And um, uh, I would definitely love to have you come back uh, for another episode. Definitely. And, uh, you know, I've been trying to get Gavin, haven't hooked in Gavin yet, but Gavin, I, (laughs) if you're listening, Gavin, I want you to come on my show. Uh, (laughs) Seriously. Gavin. this was great um was there anything you wanted to plug or anything before we get going before i do my plugs um check out gavin's podcast night cat <laughs> true crime hopefully new episodes will come out soon i know he's working on i think the first and the second of what he's calling season two um so i think they should be out here in the next couple of days but also if you liked my voice enough i am on an episode that's really heavy and will probably make you cry because it made Gavin, Susie, Brittany, and Hardy cry several times. So if you like true crime, definitely check it out. It is such a great podcast. Like I, 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 I stumbled on it um, through a podcast group that Brittany and I are both in. And then that's how I met everybody and got hooked up with them. And I was just like, I love your podcast. I absolutely love it. So yeah. definitely check out Nightcap, yeah. a true crime podcast. Uh, you can even go back to this season and listen to uh, guest host uh, uh, Brittany, who is also a host of Nightcap on uh, the roads we've traveled. And you could also hear Scott's episode and my episode on Nightcap. So definitely show some love. Um, all right. I'm going to do some plugs and we'll talk off air. Sound good? All right. Sounds good. All right. I want to thank everybody for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, hello. How are you? Please hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon to get notified every time we drop a new video. Uh, if you're listening on audio, we're available on all major podcast networks, Spotify, Apple, Google. And uh, if you have an Audible account, guess what? We're on Audible now, too. Uh, you can follow the show by heading over to Facebook.com slash Roads We've Traveled Podcast. Join the Facebook uh, group page, the Road Trippers group, if you're looking for positivity, inspiring messages, uh, or if you need to vent, there's a lot of great people in that the, that group that would love to talk to you and help you out. That's It's just a great supportive group page. Uh, you can follow the show also on Twitter and Instagram at RWTPod. Uh, if you want to directly support the show, head over to Patreon at patreon.com slash roads you've traveled. I'd appreciate it. 
Uh, we got merch available on T Public, merch that I designed myself. Yeah. So go support it. Uh, buy a t shirt. I would love it if you did. And uh, if you want to check me out on stream, I'm on Twitch every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights at twitch.tv slash jrbucklegaming. Lately, I've been doing a lot of retro gaming, I'm planning a Mario Party tournament with some of my friends, which is going to be really fun. And uh, you can check out my portfolio at www.allenmpelletierjr.com. Scott, this was great, man. Thank you so much for coming on and being so open. And I would love to have you come on again, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for having me, man. I appreciate it.